That's the set that Joe used when he worked on my head. To set the injector. Protrusions. I think that I won't be driving my thing today. <laughs> it's a little chilly out here for that. The diesel heater, or the gas heater was working on it last year, um, but usually the first time of the year I gotta do a little tinkering with it to get it to work. Uh, Lenny, got some of the stuff out of the bay over there. I took it out on last night, so I had room to put that heater in there so nothing would catch fire, but he's, uh, his bay temperature's doing good. It's getting close to 50 degrees in there now. And here's a cardboard I put in there yesterday. Whoa, almost killed myself. Um, it didn't really reduce the heat at all <laughs> because I need more cardboard. So here's my Garmin that I just got, the, the RV770. Uh, lifetime maps with traffic and I forgot what the S stands for. Um, anyways, yeah, special thanks to Ted, one of our viewers who works for Garmin. Uh, he hooked me up with his employee discount, so I actually got this, like, I think it was 45% off. Uh, I have it updating the maps right now, and uh, that'll be fun. So I've got my height. Um, 11 foot 6 inches uh, put in there and then the weight of the bus I put it at 26,000 pounds and the length at 35 feet 4 inches which would take a point my trailer hitch if it's on there I don't know that, that ever matters and that I carry propane and stuff like that too so uh, anyways it looks like a really cool unit and I can't wait to try it out but I, I'm happy now you know that last time my other Garmin just tried to send me over a bridge that had a 10 a uh, thousand pound weight limit on it, and that would have been very bad. But uh, looks like a really cool unit. And I'll give you some feedback when I'm done with it. Another uh, YouTube viewer named Chris reached out to me and sent me, he talked about it in one of the live chats that we did, but he sent me this, uh, this book, the uh, Odell's Diesel Engine Manual. And uh, it's got a whole section about the Detroit, the General Motors two-stroke in here, which is, is the Detroit, became the Detroit. Um, it's a lot, a lot of information that's in the regular manual as well, but it's just nice to have it in a little booklet. I like this. I'm going to carry this, and I'll use it as some of the reference. There's some neat information in it. It tells you all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you know, how to do fuel injectors, how to adjust the fuel flow on them, all kinds of, I mean, just... It's a neat little book and it carries lots of, covers lots of other things too, like diesel, locomotive engines, power plants, things like that too. It's a neat little book. I'm not sure what year it's from. Let me put that in the front here. Uh, looks like 1960 was the last copyright edition of it. There was a, a name in here somewhere. William P. Livingston, 6 6 of 1961. Looks like it was given to him, I guess. So that's kind of neat. He has, uh, Chris, who sent this to me, has like an antique shop or something. Uh, and his dad used to be a. Uh, A mechanic. I remember reading from his letter here. He's been a bus enthusiast his whole life. Yeah, his dad had a truck and engine salvage business after World War II, so it's kind of cool. But anyways, I appreciate the gift. Thank you, Chris. So we're heading out to Chris's today to fix my broken airbag mount. Hopefully the airbag's not blown out on it too. I wasn't able to really get under there and see what was going on. Got my new GPS up here. When I was driving through the subdivision, it said uh, RV motorhome accessibility unknown.
the thing that I've already noticed is the speedometer, or not the speedometer, but uh, the speed it has. It's got a red circle around 45. Every GPS I've ever had only tells me red when I'm going too fast. Oh, yeah. I wonder this one tells you when you're speeding. We'll never know because I don't speed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't very bright red. Right? I wonder if it gets brighter the more of the speed that we get. Because <laughs> I would have hardly noticed that. It was kind of pink. I'll throw 46 and a 45 just so you know. Allegedly. Never admit to that. I immediately slowed down. That's that's responsible driving. You forgot a zero. <laughs> the welds holding my airbag support broke off here, so I'm trying to get this out of here, and we're gonna reweld it all up. Let's see if we can get it. It's kind of wedged in there right now. I'm gonna put a vacuum on those airbags and make my life a little easier. Are we on our way over here? Wait, wait. Okay, so this is where the, I don't know if the bag blew first. My guess is that's what happened. And then the, the stress from the impact is what broke the welds on it. But either or, Chris is gonna weld it on much better than we could have ever done with a little stick welder before. And then I gotta replace this bag that's blown. And he's going to change it so the design, we're going to put a piece of plate under it so it can't roll over this corner because that's what did it. Stopped in at Gage to get some new airbags. We're getting a little bit larger bag here. We're going to add two of those. And fittings.
If you want to see something neat, go over to Chris... Chris's channel, Carter's Garage. He's building a, a riding lawnmower that'll do wheelies and you put a turbo on it. It's pretty funny. Go check it out. Time has really been helping me organize my toolboxes here on the bus. So this is kind of my main box here. It's on that big rollout. And we, we bought this other one here. White's the only color they had in stock at Harbor Freight. It was two to 10 weeks to get more. So we got white. Kelly wasn't very happy about seeing white. Um, but anyways, so this one, we had to modify it heavily to make it fit in here. Um, and I still have good access to the rest of the bay here. Um, we're adding little things like uh, this little shelf over here to hold uh, aerosol cans and I got two more shelves like that that we're going to put up in the bays uh, just to get stuff up off the bottom there and give me some more room um, but yeah it's the organization has come along good and then we got the airbag situation fixed back here yesterday so now my hand actually fits under here um, this, this is about two and a half inches lower on this side without those airbags up so Anyways, we're, we're getting it done. Uh, again, we had to cut the top off of that and make some modification to it, but um, tools that I use a lot, like my table and my craftsman box and my uh, icon wrenches are there. Um, real easy to grab. My snap-on sockets are there. The semi-deeps, I use those quite often. Uh, so all that stuff's up there on top, easy to get to. And I still got the slide here. And then by organizing some of these aerosol cans and stuff, because I've got a lot of different things like that, That'll really free up some other space in the bay, too. So I have this waterbed heater pad. It was under $50 on Amazon. And uh, I'm going to put that underneath of my aluminum fresh water tank here. And uh, hopefully the thermal mass, it'll keep that warm. And the thermal mass will continue to heat this bay. It's only like 400 watts of power. So it's I can run it off of the power inverter while we go down the road. Uh, 325 watts, actually. Uh, so that's not going to put too much of a load on the electrical system and hopefully again with the thermal mass of heating You know a uh, hundred gallons of water keeping it warm um, That should be good. So um, I've got I'm on this foam stuff. So I think it'll be okay just underneath of there It should heat it well So I got that stuff a lot more organized there And I gotta get the engine hoist back in here. I think I'm gonna take the spare clutch with me for this trip too, just in case Sage's bus needs a new clutch. That way I'll have one. Or if that if we buy that new silver size for Tyler in case there's an issue with the clutch there, I've got one here, I might as well take it. 